Hi, I'm Charles, owner and director of Kaleidoscope Rock Academy and Kaleidoscope School of Music here in the Seattle area. This is a series of videos uh, about music location for guitarists, different ways that you can write stuff down to communicate information to your bandmates, uh, fellow guitarists, or just could keep record of your ideas for yourself. The idea behind this series is there is not only one way to write stuff down, any form of writing music counts as writing music, and you want to pick the one that is the right tool for the job. So this is a little bit of a shorter video, but it's about um, a unique form of notation that's kind of a hybrid that I fell into just because of my overarching philosophy of trying to communicate things uh, tersely but accurately in charts that I write for rock band classes and students. So uh, I, you know, I was looking at this conundrum that I don't really always want to use cab, but if you write things in staff notation, then if you're writing something down for like a bass player and a guitarist and a keyboardist who are all playing in unison, you don't know whether to use bass clef, treble clef. Um, so it seemed like the fastest way to communicate this was to use a form of tab where you're still using the strings. So you have six line staff, each line representing the strings. Um, but the bass player can focus on the bottom four strings uh, and omit the top two and any lick that's played uh, on those four strings that guitar and bass have in common can be written as letters on different strings. That way you are also placing information on the page that works for a keyboardist, whereas if you use tab numbers, keyboardist is like, I have no idea what this means. So I fell into using this with rock band classes that have all of those instruments so that I could write riffs down in a way that all of them could play it. Typical situation might be we play a Nirvana song when Nirvana was a trio, but I have rock band classes that have a keyboard player. Well, by writing the riff down in letter tab, I communicate in a string specific way to the bassist and the guitarist, but I enable the keyboard player to pick up on that riff and practice playing a riff, even if it wasn't in the original recording that there was a keyboard there. With that in mind, I'm, I'm gonna pull up an example, uh, Come As You Are by Nirvana, and I am aware that the original is in full drop D. We play it in standard tuning in rock band class because most of our vocalists are young ladies. It's easier for them to sing songs like this higher anyway, and then we don't have to retune at shows in order to play the riff in an authentic way. So, so the riff here in the intro is written as primarily notes that are on the sixth string, but the names of those notes are E, E, F, F sharp. And then when the A comes up, that's on the next line up, so that means it's on the fifth string, just like it does in tab. So this reads almost like standard notation, the main difference being that we're not using symbols, we're just cutting that step of the reading process out and we're just writing the letters. Now, of course, if you're not real good at finding letters on the guitar, this type of tab still requires uh, some interpretation and or practice of where those letters are. But I think one of the things that's great about this notation, in addition to its universality to keyboard players, is it does make you, A, learn more about where notes are on the fretboard, which is always valuable. Um, and it also ties riffs and the content of riffs and melodies into the language of chords. So like when you look at this song, you, you, uh, when you see this riff and letter tab, you go, oh, there's a lot of F sharp in here. I wonder if that's the home bass note and or chord of the song. And when you get to the chords in the power chorus, you find out, uh, or in the <laughs> power chorus, when you get to the chords of the pre-chorus, you find out that it gave the first one is an F sharp chord of some kind. So, uh, it, you know, seeing the, the riff and letter tab kind of made me think more about the musical content or theoretical content of the song than just a whole string of numbers. So like other notations I've argued for in this series, this one has a little bit more of a theoretical concept or value than just straight up number tab. So that's how I communicated the riff for this song and the keyboard player in the band that's playing it right now in my school. He's actually playing the riff on an organ patch along with the guitarist. So uh, everyone was able to use the same form of tab. Uh, let's look at one more example. It's a longer example. It's another one bites class by Queen. And yes, the original for this song again is in kind of a weird like halfway between two notes tuning, but we just play it like it's in E. It's a lot easier. So this one, you know, starts with bass riff. Um, you could write it all in bass clef since it's pretty bass dominant, but in the case of this particular band, you use the right tool for the job, and if you know that you've got a young bass player who knows where the notes are on the fretboard but isn't so good at reading standard notation. There's 
in my opinion, the reason not to accommodate them by writing this in the letter tab. It's kind of in a midway zone between just writing everything in numbers for a kid and not encouraging them to actually learn to read music better, but using something that's alienating to a younger player. So I like the fact that this makes me able to connect this idea to the student faster without feeling like I'm sacrificing all my, you know, traditional musical content. Because I also attached all the stems to all of this letter tab so you can see the rhythm really clearly. <laughs> So that's the main riff there, and then um, it's kind of interesting because when I add the guitar to it, for some reason on that next line, um, I went to standard tab for a moment, which I don't remember why I did that, but there was prob probably a reason because I'm always trying to follow that philosophy of communicating the song most succinctly. Um, but when you get down to the third line, I'm back to letter tab again. <laughs> unlabeled pre-chorus there that takes you from the, the verse to the chorus and that's a little bit of a trickier reading job just because the rhythm is really specifically funky lots of 16th note syncopation and we're also using some four string that a lot of people aren't as good at finding their notes in the four string but I think it's a pretty solid example of where this could be useful and again I don't know why in the chorus later on I switched to using um non-letter tab at some point that's really kind of mysterious to me but hey you know so i have a lot of arguments with my past selves so um if you take lessons from me you're always hearing me you know criticize with me of five years ago why did you write this this way but anyway um so here's another you know wrapping this up here's another great tool for your arsenal of ways of writing things down and communicating things to other musicians letter tab you're not going to see this one online i don't think but uh, it's something I use pretty regularly in writing stuff for students. Thanks for checking out this music notation series. I've got uh, two more videos looking in the series, so check the channel for those soon. And if you like this type of video, please subscribe. Thank you for listening.